What's up everyone? Um, I thought I'd do a quick video on um, something called Chud, which is a form of esoteric Buddhism, primarily in the tantric form of Buddhism, but it's spelled C-H-O with umlauts over the O and then D. Now, the interesting concept behind Chud is that uh, the Chud practitioners seek to tap the power of fear through activities such as rituals set in graveyards and visualizations of offering their bodies in a tantric feast in order to put their understanding of emptiness to the ultimate test. Chud means cutting through. It cuts through hindrances and obscurities, sometimes denoted as demons or gods. There are, what is Chud exactly? Well, the first part of it is external Chud is to wander in fearful places where there are deities and demons. The second is internal Chud is to offer one's own body as food to deities and demons, like cutting up your body um, and giving it, giving it to as a feast um, to demons and deities. And the third is ultimate should is to realize the true nature of the mind and cut through the fine strands of hair of su subtle ignorance. Chud involves accepting willingly what is undesirable, throw oneself defiantly into unpleasant circumstances, realizing that gods and demons are one's own mind and ruthlessly severing self-centered arrogance through an understanding of the sameness of self and others. Chud was done by people that it was practiced by um, people called Chudpas, um, which translate as the Mad Saints. They were shamans and exorcists. What the Chudpas were, their, the Chudpas' very lifestyle wa was on the fringes of society, and their dwellings were in the solitude of burial grounds and haunted places and added to the mad behavior and contact with the world of darkness and mystery. So how does this relate to occultism? Well, in various aspects, in fact, because Western um, forms of spirituality are very dualistic. And what Chud does is that it tries to bring together the duality of both deities and demons into one wholeness within a person. Oftentimes we want to separate those two. For instance, occultists and other like shadow workers and light workers, they, they want to be separated from each other. They do not want to acknowledge the good and the bad um, regarding who they are. Well, the practice of Chud is to bring both sides together and offer yourself as a feast unto those parts of both your mind and external world to, uh, uh, to like a sacrifice to be eaten by these um, uh, demons and deities. Um, I think too often occult or I hate to say occultists, but light workers and shadow workers, they don't want to deal with certain aspects of themselves because they're so ingrained in the labels and the idea of who they created themselves to be. Um, you know, light workers want to be considered light workers. They don't want to deal with the shadowy aspects of the psyche. They don't want to deal with the shadowy aspects of the external world um, that could evolve. Same with shadow workers, vice versa, where they don't want to deal with the light, you know, the lighter aspects, uh, the the good, the, 
the spiritually uh, uplifting parts of, of their psyche either because they've become so ingrained in this concept of good versus evil. Now, say for instance, you are a light worker and uh, you reject any part of the shadowy aspects within yourself and um, your practices as a practitioner. You do not do uh, black magic spells. You do not um, venture into haunted homes, you know. You only deal with things that are um, on the positive aspect. Well, you're doing a disservice to yourself as a person. Who knows? You could be the Antichrist in disguise and you've buried that so deep within yourself that you're not willing to bring those things up through your mind and face them and deal with the demons of that ignorance. Um, these are like the carnal aspects of, of what it means to be human, you know, and to transcend that mindset that you are not completely one, but you are also the other. And this can you go vice versa for those who are shadow workers. You know, they want to live this image of they are only into the dark arts, that they are only doing negative things, you know, because that the evil of everything is what makes them who they are. And they could be the Messiah, you know, the coming Messiah of God, God's chosen one deep down inside, but they've re oppressed that so much and regressed it so much within themselves that they're dealing, they're not dealing with the ignorance that is involved in this type of, of mindset. So when, what, what Chud, Chud does is that it makes you face those ignorances. Like, like I said, I'm not an expert in this form of esoteric Buddhism, but it does have some substance that can be addressed in this idea of Western culture where one, such as light workers or shadow workers, are completely separated. I mean, we need to both look at the psychology of this and the spirituality of this, that in fact, maybe you are not in reality who you say you are, that you need to address those things that are deep and dark within you um, that you have repressed so deeply because you're afraid that it might disrupt the whole idea and scheme of what you've created for yourself as a person. You know, sometimes people say, well, you know, I don't deal with, sh like light workers will say, I don't deal with black magic. It is all bad. It is all terrible. But how do you know as a light worker that you are not gifted in those areas, that you are not bestowed with those things? Same with, you know, shadow workers. How do you know that you are not actually a light worker instead, that you are not bestowed with those gifts? So what Chud does is that it makes you face those things within yourself, that you cut through those ignorances, that you are resting from the beginning and resting at the end because you have done the self-sacrifice. Now, Tibetan Buddhism is pretty scary. I mean, you're talking about chopping people up and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, you, it's almost like a borderline, I, I would say it's almost like cannibalism, you know, where they're using human bones and, and stuff like that. So what these chudpas, uh, they were like the shamans and the exorcists of this religion, they would do is that, like I said, they would go into these deep, dark places and do rituals like these charnel places like graveyards and and uh, haunted home, haunted 
areas and they would do rituals there, you know? So when, when we always talk about when occultists and I would say everyone's an occultist who practices any form of spirituality, um, you shouldn't always disregard those certain aspects of yourself that um, you feel that you need to repress, um, that you feel that does not benefit you because they are either too evil or too good, too, um, too negative or too positive, in better words, to really define who you are as a label. You know, I think um, if you are a spiritualist person, then you should be able to discover both aspects of your lightness and darkness as a human being, cut through that ignorance and understand that, yeah, okay, I will do a black magic curse even though I'm a light worker and I probably am exceptionally good out of it instead of trying to vicariously push that on to other people. You know, um, there is a sense of fakeness and not and uh, not finding those aspects of yourself. So, I mean, like I said, I am not a expert in tantric Buddhism or any form of esoteric Buddhism. I like to study it. <coughs> Excuse me. I like to study it. Um, but I'm not ordained in that in any of those um, areas. But I find that a lot of the philosophy and ideas and concepts of it really make sense. I mean, this Chud practice was dis was formulated in the 11th century, 11th century by uh, Ma Ching Labdron, and she was a woman who who uh, created this form of esoteric Buddhism. So, I mean, in order for any spiritualistic person, if you think you are living a label um, to garner people's attention, to seek notoriety, um, but yet deep down inside you don't feel like that as a person because it doesn't suit your image, then you might need to reevaluate these things. You need to cut through that ignorance. You need to cut yourself up into pieces and feed it and feed the demons and the and the deities everything they need of you so that you can attain that true emptiness of being nothing, nothing in essence, the, the emptiness that Buddhism always uh, talks about that, you know, um, to be almost like in just nothingness, you know, um, that it's okay to, to not feel that, um, you cannot face those fears within yourself, that you cannot um, cut through that ignorance that is hidden deep within. So I guess in a sense, um, like I said, I, I'm not a Buddhist practitioner by far, but the concept of Chud is, is a very good one. It's, it's something that I think um, more spiritualists need to really consider. Um, that we need to get into those ghettos of the world and in our minds and in our, our spiritual selves, you know. That um, we need to go into those dark places so that we can bring up the darker aspects of the deities that that live within us, those demons and those 
uh, uh, angels within us, you know, we need to acknowledge both sides that we shouldn't be afraid of them because once we experience them and once we understand them, that brings us out of ignorance. That brings us into knowing who we are, um, that we're no longer arrogant in our uh, ideas of who, who we should be or how things should, should be according to our concepts of who we are and what the world should be like. Um, so, like I said, um, if you're a spiritualist at all, this should ring true to you. You can look it up. It's called Chud, C-H-O, with the umlauts, two dots over the O, and then a D. So, um, I hope this helps. I hope it kind of gives you an idea of you know, the, that there really isn't like this duality that should exist. In fact, that it should be something that we all should acknowledge within ourselves, that we should allow the demons and deities to feast upon us, you know, in a tantric feast to eat us up, to chop ourselves up visually and give that to these demons and deities to venture into those dark uh, parts of ourselves or in the world and to acknowledge that, you know, from there we can learn a lot. So anyways, uh, Manji, and I hope you guys have a good night. Bye.